All right. Uh, hi. So I thought I'd do a quick screencast to showcase how you would, uh, the process you'd go through for you to register um, uh, content hosted using OJS with uh, Crossref. So this would be in an instance or a situation where you'd have subscribed uh, for a DOI prefix and you're wanting to, uh, to register your content or your articles published uh, in a journal that is hosted using OJS with Crossref. Um, so um, long story short, if, if you want to throw through with the generic details of how you do this, um, there's a documentation by Crossref outlining the process you'd have to go through, very easy to follow. Um, something else worth mentioning here is that I'm showcasing using the web deposit uh, uh, approach or option because it turns out that the, the only other viable option, which is much, much easier to, to actually work with, is, is um, is, is only possible if you're using OJS version 3.2 and above. We happen to be using OJS version 3.0 at, at my institution. All right, so on with it. So the first step is you, you go to the um, web deposit page, right? Uh, so if you just copy paste the URL here, um, you'd find yourself on, on this web deposit page. Now what's presented to you is, um, is a form, right? Um, which has uh, a series of enumerated steps that you go through. So the first thing you have to do is specify the, I'm just going to zoom in here, blow it out. You specify the data type, right, that you are wanting to register. Because you are registering OJS um, uh, uh, content or an OJS, OJS articles, you choose the journal option here. And then as part of step number two, you specify the journal descriptive information. Um, this is best done if you directly go to, uh, if you open up, um, if you access the back end of the, of the journal that has the content you're wanting to register, right? So in my case, I'm just going to go to journals.unza.zm. I'm already logged on and then I'll access the, the journal that has the, the, the articles that I would want to register. So I'll click that um, and then I will go to the dashboard. If you go to settings and then journal, you will be presented with a page that has most of the journal descriptive information that you'd want, right? So I'm just going to yank this out so that I can easily context switch uh, between the form and uh, OJS. The journal, the journal title here would be what you have under journal name, so just copy paste. The abbreviation is again what you have under journal initials ideally, which is JLSS in our case. The journal DOI, now, the journal DOI is dependent on uh, what sort of pattern you are using as an institution. In our case, because we are using our DOI prefix to, to register content coming in from multiple journals and in fact, multiple publication venues, we've uh, come up with an internal naming scheme. So the internal naming scheme is such that we start off by specifying the journal prefix forward slash followed by the static name UNSA, which is abbreviation for the institution, dot the shorthand notation for the publication venue. So in this case, it's the shorthand notation for Journal of Law and Social Sciences, which is JLSS. So I'll say JLSS dot, uh, so I'll just put the square brackets here, dot, you'd have uh, the volume, dot the issue, dot uh, the article ID or something. Right, so this is a sort of pattern that we're using. I'm going to copy paste this pattern, and then I'll remove uh, I'll remove uh, portions of of this DOI that I don't need. So because I'm wanting to specify the journal DOI, I'll remove everything beginning volume all the way up to the end here, including the dot, um, and I'll remove the square brackets. So the DOI for <coughs> for the journal is that um, that often you may string there. The journal URL, this is best done by just accessing the journal, right? Using your browser and then copy pasting the, the link from the address bar. So again, I'll just uh, go to the OJS uh, platform and then access the journal and then just copy the link in the address bar. Yeah, and then I'll paste it under journal URL. The ISSN numbers again would be specified in OJS in the backend, right? Under settings journal. Um, you scroll down, you have this portion that has uh, details about your ISSN. So just copy the print ISSN here. The volume, um, I am showcasing um, this example using the most current issue, which is uh, volume four, issue number two. 
right? So what I'll do here is I'll just specify these details here. Volume four, issue number two. So I'll say volume is four, issue is two. The issue DOI, again, I'll copy the same pattern that uh, we are using, paste it here. But in, the, uh, in this particular instance, I'll go all the way up to issue. Um, the placeholder for the journal will be just JLSS without the square brackets dot. The volume here is volume four, right? The issue is two, right? The issue URL, again, I'll access to make my life a lot easier, make sure that I'm not making mistakes. I will access the, uh, the issue that I'm interested in. In fact, this is best done by going to an example article and then uh, in the breadcrumbs here, you click the issue. See volume four, issue number two of 2020. I'll just click here and then copy the link in the address bar. Paste it there. Um, the, the publication dates for print and online, again, this would probably be uh, available via OJS, depending on, on, on whether the person who was doing the data entry actually specified this information. Um, in our case, this is best done by just uh, accessing an example article and then scrolling down, you notice here that this was published on 30th June, right, 2020. Um, we, we've phased out, uh, we've deprecated the print version, so I'm just going to specify the same year for both the print and, uh, and uh, online, right? Um, print and, and, and online publications. So 2020, uh, 0630. And then that's it, you'd have specified the journal descriptive information, right? Um, the, first, the third step is you, you now submit the content, right? Um, so at this stage, you can submit this information you specified if you're doing this for the first time. So you'd be submitting the, uh, the mapping between the, 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 the journal, the journal uh, URL and DOI and the journal issue um, uh, DOI and the corresponding URL. Um, I will choose the add article because I'm, I'm wanting to showcase an example of uh, uh, adding a single article, right? Um, the next page, right? Uh, takes me to this form here, which has uh, a section on the top, right, of XML encoded information that I specified on the previous page. So this would be the journal information. Uh, if you notice, I have uh, the details I was specifying, like uh, the publication year, right, um, the journal volume, the journal issue, uh, the DOIs associated with the journal volumes, and I mean the, the, the journal and the journal issue, including the URLs. Um, and then at the bottom here is uh, an option or a form that allows me to specify the article metadata, right? I am going to showcase this example by using this article called uh, Sexing Africa, African Time and Space, right? The fetish of the colonial gender. Ooh, fancy. Um, so the title, I just copy paste this title here as is, no JS. No need for me to specify the original title because it's the same thing I've specified here. The contributors, I have a total of three contributors here. I have Ibrahim Wachira. So I just copy paste the first name, last name. Um, the organization is Kenyatta University for Ibrahim Wachira. Um, and then because I have a total of three contributors or authors, I'll say add contributor and specify details for Mugo Muhia, right? First name is Mugo, last name is uh, Muhia. I'll add an organization for Mugo Muhia, and we see that uh, Mugo Muhia is also from Kenyatta University. I add, just going to zoom out like that so that you can clearly see my screen. I add details for the third author, which is, uh, or who is uh, Kimani Kaiga. So Kimani Kaiga. Again, what I normally prefer doing is copy pasting to avoid making mistakes, and then I'll add the uh, organization or institution, which is Kenyatta University, right? Um, I will just get rid of these uh, uh, default URLs for the uh, ORCID, ORCID, uh, ORCID IDs or the ORCID URLs because this information is not specified uh, in the article that was submitted. Um, and then I will copy paste the abstract. Copy paste it from here. The article DOI, right, would be specified using the same pattern here. 
So I just copy paste this generic pattern and then just make uh, appropriate changes. The journal portion is going to be JLSS. The volume, this, this article that I'm adding is from volume four, issue two. So I say 4.2. The article ID, I get the article ID by copying the URL in the address bar. Once you access the article you're adding, um, and then just get the auto generated number the, the number that's automatically generated by OJS so this will be 469 so it will be 469 the URL again you copy paste it from the address bar once you access the article so I'll just copy paste this URL and then <clears throat> the details of the first page and the last page these will be the page numbers uh, specified in your published article so in, in our case what we would have to do is to be certain we open up the the bitstream or the PDF itself and then look at the page number on the first page and the page number on the last page. So we see that uh, uh, the first page is page number 29 and the last page is page number 39. So say 29, 39 here. Here will be 39. Um, and then that's it. You are, you are done, right? And so you just uh, click finish. Now in the event that you were adding multiple articles from the issue, what you'd have had to do is you click on add another article until you 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 exhaust all the articles uh, from that particular issue. Um, if you want to to do a, a, a batch uh, a batch uh, registration, so I'll click on finish, and then what Crossref will do is they'll redirect me to this page where I specify uh, my credentials, right? Uh, all right, login. Um, and voila, I right, just save this. So um, at this stage, the, the final step is uh, Crossref will ask that you specify an uh, email address that will be used to send you uh, information once these uh, details of the deposit process have been processed. Um, so you get a notification if, if, if the process was successful or if there are any errors or something. So just specify my institution email address and then just say deposit. Um, and then that's it. Um, you would be you would be done. Now at this uh, at this stage, um, you can either choose to restart this process and start adding new articles, or, or you can just wait for the automatically generated email to come through to your mailbox to check to see if the um, the the registration process was successful. So I see that uh, uh, confirmation message just came through. And if I access this and I'm kind of like just copy paste this XML and uh, and 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 check the status of the deposit process, you will notice that just zoom in here, you notice that this was successful, right? So pay particular attention to the portion that says uh, I guess beginning diagnostic here. Um, or the batch data. What you notice here is the total number of records I deposited are three because I I was registering the the journal itself, the issue. Uh, so I specified the journal DOI, the issue DOI, and a sample article. So a total of three records, right? All of uh, which, all of which were successful. So no warnings, no errors. So this is done. Um, if you want to check to see if this process was successful, um, you can you can choose to uh, to to ac you can you can just choose to to access using a web browser uh, uh, the DOI itself. Um, the way the the way DOI is specified here is just say HTTPS or HTTP uh, DOI.org slash the uh, prefix, which is 10.5397 in my case, slash unza dot JLSS. So if this was successful, I expect to be redirected to, to um, to uh, the journal homepage, right, for JLSS. I'll open an incognito window and then paste that link and hopefully the registration process is done. So voila, this works. I can do the same thing for the article, right? Um, if you remember the article uh, for the issue DOI was same pattern, 53974 slash unza dot uh, volume dot issue 
again, if I copy paste this in an incognito window, I should be redirected to the issue, right? Where I have those four articles, right? I can do the same thing for the article itself. If you remember, the pattern is similar here. So I said doi.org slash 10.53974 slash unza.jlss.4.2 dot the article ID was 469. So this is meant to redirect me to the article. Again, I'll open a new incognito, I mean, it's an incognito window, but a new tab. This will redirect me to that article that I was adding. So voila, it's not that hard. It's just that uh, it's, it's a manual process. And so it might take uh, a bit of time for you to register content using this process. All right, thank you very much. I do hope this was very useful. Good day.